All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going over another example on using the variation of parameters to solve a second order differential equation. In this case, we have a cos function on the right hand side. Um, and because we have the appearance of this cos function, this equation would actually be easier to solve using the undetermined coefficients method. Um, but again, I'm just looking for some examples to walk through the variation of parameters. So we're going to use the variation of parameters anyways. Um, okay, so to get started, uh, basically what we're doing here is we're looking for a particular solution. We're going to find that by using this expression here for yp of t. Um, but along the way, we're also going to find the complementary solution to the original differential equation. And then if we combine those, we're going to have, that. if we combine the complementary solution and the particular solution, we just basically add them together, uh, we're going to also have the general solution to the differential equation. So to get started, let's find the complementary solution first. So what we do is we find the homogeneous differential equation that's associated with the original one. And basically all we do is we set the left hand side equal to zero. And uh, now we have the homogeneous version associated to the original. Um, and then we can write the characteristic equation for this which is just going to be r squared plus 2r minus 8 equals to 0. And then we can clean this up a little bit. We have r plus 4 and r minus 2 equals 0. So we're going to see here that our roots, we have one root is positive 2, and we have another root which is negative 4. So because we have two real distinct roots, then the complementary solution uh, we write as c1e to the 2t plus c2e to the negative 4t. Okay, but what we can see here is this is the form uh, c1y1 plus c2y2. So we can see that y1 is equal to um, e to the 2t and y2 is equal to e to the negative 4t. Now to get w here, uh, w is the Ronskian of y1 and y2, so we're going to need to take the derivative of both. So y1 prime is equal to 2e to the 2t, and y2 prime is equal to negative 4e to the negative 4t. The, the Ronskian here is the Ronskian of y1 and y2. So basically it is the determinant when we put them into this uh, two by two matrix form where we just have y1, y2, y1 prime, and y2 prime. So that we can just fill in all of the values that we have. And we're gonna see that this simplifies down to negative six e to the negative two t. All right, now we have all of the inputs that we need for this expression. And just so we make sure that we have them all in order, we have y1, y2, uh, we have g of t and we have w. So y1 is e to the 2t, y2 is e to the negative 4t, g of t was the original right hand side of the original differential equation, so that is cos of 2t, and w is negative 6e to the negative 2t. So let's go and plug all of this into our expression for the particular solution. So before we get started here with integration, we can simplify it a little bit and pull out this one over negative six from each term and also do the exponential division here. Now, this is where this method starts to get messy is when we have to perform the integration. In this case, we have to do integration by parts because we have these two functions, e to negative two t times cos of two t. Um, so we have to apply integration by parts here. And then we also have to apply integration by parts later to this one. So let's do these one at a time. We're actually going to have to apply it twice. So if you remember how this works the fast way, um, we have to pick one function to derive and one function to integrate, um, and it's going to make our lives easier if we decide that we're if we decide to um, derive the cos of two t function, and then we're going to be integrating the e to the negative two t. Just going to remind ourselves here that this is derive and this is integrate. All right, so we're going to go through do this once. This is going to be negative two sine of two t, and then uh, we derive it again and we get negative 4 cos of 2t. Okay, over here when we integrate e to the negative 2t we have negative 1 half e to the negative 2t and then we have, uh, once we integrate that again, we get uh, positive 1 fourth 
e to the negative 2t. And if you recall how we do this, we multiply these two together, um, we keep them positive, we multiply these two together, but we flip the sign to negative, and then we multiply these two together, uh, we give it a positive sign, um, but it's actually the integral of the multiplication of these two. So if we expand that out, we're going to get this big long expression. So this 4 of 4 uh, just becomes 1, and what we want to do now is we want to get this over on the left-hand side, so we're going to add the integral of e to the negative 2t cos 2t dt to both sides, which gives us two of them on the left, and gets it off of the right side. And ultimately we are looking just for the integral of e to the negative 2t cos 2t, that was what the whole purpose of this is, so we want to get rid of this 2 now, so we divide both sides by 2. And it's going to make our lives a little bit easier once again if we pull out this uh, 1 fourth e to the 2t. Because now this is going to be really nice for us. We have the integral of e to the negative 2t cos 2t. This is it. So what we want to do is we want to come back up here and uh, look at what our equation was for the particular solution. Um, we want to substitute in what we just found here for this integral now. And I just realized actually up here, this is a little typo, this is not supposed to be negative, that is supposed to be positive. Because we're going to come in here, and these are going to cancel out, we have the e to the 2t times e to the negative 2t, um, that's the same as e to the 0 in total, which is just 1, so effectively we can just get rid of those, and um, reduce this down to 1 over 24th times this sine 2t minus cos 2t. All right, so now we just have to solve the second integral, and we're going to do it in the exact same way. We're going to use integration by parts, and then rather than having me talk the whole way through it, I'm just going to save you the pain and agony of that, and fast forward until we figure out what the integral is, which is 1 over 10 e to the 4t times all of this stuff, which is sine of 2t plus 2 cos of 2t. So what we can do, this is equal to the integral, we can sub it back in right here into the blue equation where we have the integral of e to the 4t cos 2t dt. Notice here it's the same thing, e to the 4t cos 2t dt. All right, so we're going to plug that back in. And the e to the negative 4t is going to cancel out with the e to the positive 4t. And then all we want to do now is just simplify the last little bit here. So we want to change this denominator to uh, something common between these, and it's uh, going to be easy for us to set that to 360. So if we just gather like terms here, uh, we're going to have 9 over 360 sine of 2t and minus 27 over 360 cos of 2t. And we can reduce this one last little bit for our particular solution. Um, just reduce the, the denominator here down to 40. So we have 1 over 40 sine of 2t minus 3 over 40 cos of 2t. And that is our particular solution that we have found to the original differential equation. So if that's all you've been asked to find, then good, you can stop here. But if you remember up from before, we also had our complementary solution, and uh, basically the general solution to the original differential equation is just the sum of the complementary solution plus the particular solution. And uh, our complementary solution that we found before was just C1e to the 2t plus C2e to the negative 4t. And then when we add in the particular solution, we just have plus 1 over 40 sine of 2t uh, minus 3 over 40 cos of 2t. And so this here, y of t, is our general solution. So if you're also asked to find that, um, you, you actually have all of the information you need to write that down. All right, thanks for watching, and hopefully you see now why using the undetermined coefficients method is a lot easier when we have a sine or a cos function on the right-hand side than using a variation of parameters.